Don't call it a comeback. The time is now. Hello there YouTube, my name is Chuggy and uh, today I am playing some Battlefield 4, playing some Conquest Large on Operation Firestorm and today guys I've got a video which is long overdue. Don't call it a comeback, I, I have always tried to be here as much as I can but as I'll explain in a minute, things have changed and as a result what I'll be producing will be changing as well but I'll get on to that in a second. Most importantly, I have to say thank you to each and every one of you who are watching. Because if you're watching this, it means that you've been subscribed to me and you are watching again. It's been like seven, eight, I think almost, no, no, not quite nine months, but it's been a long time since I was uploading to YouTube. And to just come back and expect viewership is <laughs> a bit rich. So for you guys watching, thank you for, well, for watching as always, but for sticking with me. Um, I've had, well, I wouldn't say hard, heck no, some of the hardships out there in the real world. It's, it's nothing what I've been going through. But I've had to grow up. I've had to finally sort of realise that, you know, I can't do it all. I have to be able to, to time manage and pick my battles. And it's been a hard process to try and figure out what I can and can't do. It might have been evidence, I, I don't know, but towards my the end of my time uploading... September time, October time last year, I wasn't really enjoying making those videos. I'm not sure if it was evident in the stuff I was putting out, but it felt to me like I was becoming more and more like a factory. I was just producing videos for producing videos' sake, and as I've said multiple times, if you ever get to that stage on YouTube, it's not good. It's it's perhaps an, an idea to, to take a step back, to have a think about what you're doing and, and why you're doing it in the first place, you know, there's no point making videos for making videos sake. If you're going to say something, say it because you mean it. And it got to the point where I was so used to making, you know, almost TV style series episodes as it were, you know, things like, you know, the factions let's play and, and the rest. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed making those videos initially, but you know, as things went on, it just felt like, oh, I'm just producing these to fill a gap because I won't be, you know, I won't have time to put a commentary together for, you know, I don't know, Wednesday or Friday or whenever it was. Yeah, it got to a point where it felt manufactured, and that wasn't fun. Um, I don't know if it was evident, and I'm, I apologise if you can hear my washing machine right now. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if it sounded, you know, manufactured or or what. But it certainly, to me, it didn't sit right. And as things happen, it perhaps was a blessing that I had some things taken out of my control, meaning that I had to stop doing something. Um, to to basically well not to you know continue living but you know to be able to continue to to do what I want to do. It's funny now looking back. You know I've talked many times about you know being in an environment, making decisions, and all this kind of jazz. Um, it's funny now looking back at the environment I had when I was at university. You know all the free time and things I have, where I'd be able to produce multiple videos a week on all sorts of bits and pieces. Get the opportunity, moreover, to play games more than I do now, and um, basically be able to talk about what I'm seeing, what I think, so on and so forth. As uh, as as things went on, unfortunately, I just as things have gone, I just don't have time to do that anymore. I've got a day job, you know, a nine to five, which I have to do. You know, I've got to put food on the table for me so I can, you know, live and all the rest. I've got bills to pay. I've got people to see. I've got, you know, real world stuff going on for the first time. And I think, you know, back in September, I was naive, right? I, I, I just did not, for this, you know, for for any part of me, comprehend how much stuff I would have to be responsible for and, and have to get done. And ultimately, something had to give. I, I couldn't do it all. And unfortunately, what gave was the YouTube stuff, and it did pain me. But at the same time, I kind of looked at it and went, well, perhaps this is for the better. You know, I'll be able to take a step back, have a think about what's going on, and, and come back stronger. As it happens, things changed which were even out of my control then. YouTube's changed. The whole gaming scene has changed. Battlefield 4 did not quite turn out as expected. And I'll get to these things in a moment, but... As it happens, I think perhaps the break was a, was a beneficial thing for me. I've been able to look at what I was producing, think about what I liked, what I think went well, what didn't, as well as get on with other things. And um, as a result now, I, th I think I'd be able to come back and you know produce better videos than I would be if I stayed on, as it were. So again, I just wanted to say initially, thank you for sticking with me. I know that uh, it was a bit abrupt how I disappeared, but... 
I'll be back for, for well, I'll say for good, but I'll be back to the best of my ability. Um, let me put it like that. So the first thing, I'll be level with you guys. The channel, the videos I produce will not be the same. Not be anything, well, I'll try and make it as like as possible, but I just don't have the time to make the number of videos and the style of videos that I was able to produce when I was back at university. It's the sad shame of growing up, I guess. Um, so essentially, I'm, I'm going to you know vary and, and change up what I'm doing. And uh, you know, by all means, if you have any thoughts and opinions, do feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I'm more than happy to make you guys a part of this process. Essentially, the kind of you know series videos, you know, things like the factions let's play that I was doing with the lads, and uh, the regular commentaries and that kind of stuff will have to stop to a degree. Uh, it's it's difficult. It takes a lot of time to produce one of these videos. Um, my old arbitration was that if the viewership, you know, as in hours, uh, you know, spent, I don't know, say a video is 10 minutes long and it's watched 500 times, that's 5,000 minutes, you know, if that outweighs the time it produced, to, uh, produce, or time it took to produce the video, it's been a worthwhile thing to do. I never got to a stage where that ratio didn't work out, but still, it took, you know, I'd say an average video, maybe 20, 30, 40 minutes to do. Uh, that is edit and record the audio and all that kind of jazz, as well as, you know, play the game. And, um, you know, when you're producing big, you know, long uh, sort of series of things, that can take some serious time. So what I'm going to do is take a step back from focusing on series style videos, as it were. I'm going to try and focus on doing more, you know, commentaries. Not at regular intervals, unfortunately, you know, I can't be able to say, I'll oh, guarantee a, a new commentary every Wednesday or every Friday or anything like that. What I will do, though, is I'll be able, I'll produce a commentaries for you guys about various topics, about gaming, who knows what, um, as regularly as I can. So it won't be a regular uh, every Wednesday or anything like that. It'll be as much as I can. And hopefully you guys will be able to understand where I'm coming from on that. But uh, I think that by doing that, it takes a bit of pressure off. And it means I can focus on putting out good stuff rather than regular stuff, if you get my meaning. Having said that, you know, the Let's Plays and things won't go away completely. What they will do, though, is become less frequent, I guess. Um, I intend to do a few different Let's Plays. I've got recorded a complete Let's Play of Battlefield 4's campaign, a complete Let's Play of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, as well as a variety of the side missions actually in Ground Zeroes as well. Um, and I fully intend to upload those in time. It won't happen quickly, but as a kind of a, a, just a, a separate thing to do alongside the commentaries to try and get some fairly regular stuff out there, I'll start uploading those and you know we'll see how they're received and you know as much as anything, and you know, as I've always said, if you guys have any thoughts or, or feelings on, on any of this, feel free to, to you know sound off down in that comment section. Um, you know, I, I have an idea of what I think will work, and you guys, uh, of course, you know, you're the viewership. Um, you'll have an idea of what you'd prefer to see. So I'd love to know what you think about my my ideas, my plans. So that's where I think I'm going to try and go in the next, you know, who knows, couple of years. <laughs> we'll see how how things and times change. Um, you know, this is a great hobby for me, and you know, other things have come along. The sim racing's going from strength to strength, for example, and you'll be seeing those as well. Those races, as uh, when I get the opportunity to sort all those out. But, uh, but yeah, the uh, things had to change. Something had to give, and it's funny how the environment changed around me as well. So, in the time I've been away, a lot has changed as far as this sort of gaming scene has gone. The big fish have got bigger. The smaller guys have disappeared, and the landscape of, you know, I wouldn't call it gaming media, but the landscape of YouTubers, you know, people uploading gameplay and things, have changed. We've got new generations of console which have built-in streaming and video editing capabilities now. We just didn't have that with the previous generation. We've got the rise of streaming, which, well, Google, YouTube are looking to buy Twitch for a billion dollars in cash, which is ridiculous. There's a lot changing. I mean, YouTube's changed as a platform. There was the whole furore of uh, sort of networked channels, which you know mine is one with Machinima, no longer being t so tightly integrated, meaning that you know potentially there's a bit more risk. And meanwhile, just as YouTube has changed up, it's it's funny how the big guys have got bigger and the smaller guys have got smaller. So we'll have to see how things go, really. Um, we'll have to see if all of a sudden lawyers start turning up left, right, and centre once you know if Twitch is bought. Um, you know, content takedowns, God knows what else, um, and we'll see where the, the story goes. Um, 
one thing I'll mention, I, I will fully intend to stream, but uh, the issue that I have with streaming at the minute, and those of you who watched my sort of test stream, which I did a while ago, the software I've got still isn't quite up to muster. Um, one of the big factors which also had a, you know, an implication in me you know, having to stop doing the YouTube stuff is I, I did a bit of a silly thing. Um, I updated some of my software and all of a sudden it didn't work. I couldn't you know, capture or record or stream um, as I want to and the quality I want to and all the rest. So it's going to be interesting to see how technology changes, how the tools available change. And it's just going to be an interesting experience going through that forward and as new games come out what happens with those and, and you know try and do what we can with it so anyway I'll digress um, I'm back I'm back for what I hope is the foreseeable future and again thank you very much for sticking with me I know that uh, YouTube is a fickle place and the fact that you guys are still here is very much appreciated trust me on that so anyway Having talked about all all the, that business, let's talk something a bit more relevant to this video, which is Battlefield 4. Blimey, I, I guess, you know, again, you know, eight, nine months ago, there was expectation. You know, we're all playing the beta, having a, a fairly grand time with it. You know, things had changed from Battlefield 3, and, uh, you know, we, we're kind of like, okay, well, it's a beta, you know, it, you know, things will change for the final game. You know, okay, there's a bug here, there's an issue there, but, you know, it's a beta, right? Isn't it surprising how, how things have been received, and uh, and what a mess Battlefield 4 was. It's a kind of shame, really. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when Battlefield works, it is so amazing to play. Um, I've had more fun in Battlefield 4 in the rounds and the games where there haven't been hit detection issues, or weirdness with being shot in one bullet, or <laughs> or any of the various issues which have been looked at and resolved in the, the past months. When Battlefield 4 works, it really, really works. The problem is, though, that EA frankly blew it. They wanted to have a Battlefield game out last year, last September, to compete with Call of Duty again, and look at the result. Um, you know, a Battlefield 4, as it's now being referred to in the industry, was pulled, and what we got was a pretty messy experience, unfortunately, um, which is a real shame, because it's done a lot of damage. Not to say that Battlefield is irreparably, irreparably damaged. Oh, crikey, no. Battlefield, I'm sure, will go on as a series. Heck, we've just had the announcement of Battlefield Hardline. And in fact, I actually was or had recorded this uh, commentary last weekend, but then Hardline kind of leaked and was announced, so... Um, so yeah, I decided to re-record it because I'm seriously concerned about Hardline. And moreover than Hardline, I'm really concerned about Battlefield as a franchise. Battlefield is it's not a simulator, but it's a war game. It's 32 army or 32 soldiers versus 32 soldiers playing for an area of land, capturing flags, rushing objectives, planting bombs, I don't know. Um, you know, it's a war game. The fact that Battlefield Hardline has been announced sort of playing a spin on, on cops and robbers, at first I was kind of like, okay, that's a bit different. Then I saw the leaked footage and I started to worry. To me, all it looked like was Battlefield 3 with some of Battlefield 4's animations with reskins. Now, after the video was sort of released, uh, one of the head guys over at Vis uh, Visceral Games, who are the ones who are actually producing Hardline, said, oh yeah, that footage is six months old. And he was kind of surprised how, how people responded to, uh, to it. Okay, yeah, six months is a long time. Things could have changed. But I am sceptical, let's say, of Battlefield in a civilian environment. I can't see how 32 crooks versus 32 policemen would work in a bank raid. Uh, it, it, I don't think it would happen. Um, it's it's kind of you know it, it doesn't quite sit with me right with me I guess is is the thing to say. Um, I hope that I'm proved wrong. You know as you know well E3 is just around the corner. Um, you know I hope 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 with my heart that they'll show something off and all of a sudden everything will click into place and it will be you know I'll I'll have all my skepticism well and truly answered. But I do worry that. Fundamentally, it just to me feels like another cash grab. And 
we've had Battlefield 4. We had it as, frankly, a rush release. I'm a software, you know, I work on software. It's my day job. I could tell just by the way that the game was that the dev guys just simply were not given anywhere near enough time to produce the game that they wanted to produce, and the result was a rushed product. If Battlefield 4 was released now in its current state, there would be nowhere near the controversy and the acrimony that has, you know, surrounded Battlefield 4. Um, you know, I wouldn't say laughably, you know, a few days ago, Battlefield put on their Twitter, um, you know, vote for us as game of the generation. And I thought, well, utmost respect, guys. You released a game which wasn't finished, and, you know, it has had its fair fair share of issues. Not to say that's a bad game now, it's been somewhat, you know, fixed and well, is a lot more playable than it used to be. Um, it, it you know it's not up there with games like I don't know say Red Dead Redemption or The Last of Us which was released in the last if you will console generation. Anyway, I worry for Battlefield as a franchise. I worry for Hardline because I love Battlefield because it gives you those unpredictable moments where you just wouldn't get or you, know, you wouldn't get them in other games. You know you would have a hard time to find another shooter, first person shooter, anything at all really, where one minute you could be chasing an attack jet in a A-10 Warthog trying to take it down, and then be parachuting on the ground to try and take an objective while being surrounded by enemy tanks. It's just one of those things. You just don't get that only in Battlefield experience anywhere. And I really, really hope that this isn't just EA, you know, trying to make a, you know, a Call of Duty, you know, answer, I don't know, um, you know, they tried with Medal of Honor and with Warfighter, which was no way a, a bad or terrible game, um, but it just didn't work. It, it didn't quite have the execution required, and I really, really, really would hate it if you know Battlefield was spoiled just to try and compete with a competitor, which, uh, compete with a competitor, which frankly is going to you know kill itself in a few years from you know just being overdone and over farmed. Anyway, so I worry about Battlefield Four. I worry about Battlefield, I worry about the whole series at the moment, and I really, really hope that come E3 that all these these kind of concerns are answered, we'll have no issues, and, and we'll, we'll be able to look at this and laugh, but um, I do worry. So, yeah, it's a, it's a real shame, because, you know, Battlefield, as as you'll see in, you know, the coming you know videos and the coming weeks, it's it's given me, you know, again... So many great moments, um, so many wonderful little uh, experiences that you wouldn't catch anywhere else. I've got a series of gameplays which I'll be talking, you know, various things about what I've found in Battlefield 4 and what I'd like to see in Battlefield 5. I mean, well, we'll see what Hardline offers, um, or, you know, a Bad Company 3, or who knows what. Um, there is a lot of potential. There really, really is. And it would be a real shame to have it squandered just as a corporate exercise. I don't know. Anyway, I, I will stop. <laughs> stop on on this on this tirade this topic because another thing I want to talk about at this point in time is the new consoles we've got the Xbox One we've got the PS4 and it's funny again how what a difference nine months can make and again what a difference a generation can make I guess um, this is why uh, or, or the current state of play we've got where you know Sony with their PlayStation are on a roll and Microsoft with the Xbox you know they, they've had a bit of an issue and they're, they're trying to get back in the game this is why competition is good you know arguably Sony kind of really screwed up with the PS3 they, they in best intention wanted to give it the most powerful processor and this interesting that and this interesting other and it didn't quite work when it came to the games you know the, it was hard to develop for meanwhile Microsoft for the Xbox 360, they came out a year earlier, they had more accessible hardware, and they hit the ground running. And they schooled Sony in the previous generation. And isn't it funny how, you know, a few years later, we're basically in the exact opposite situation. We've got two companies going at it hammer and tongs with, you know, trying to, to be the, the latest and greatest, and look at what we've got. As I've already said, we've now got consoles which, you know, you can inbuilt edit, stream, upload to YouTube, Twitch, whatever you like. Um, loads of social integration. I mean, perhaps it is a product of the times. You know, the world. You know, with for example, um, YouTube, social media, all this kind of stuff. That is a much bigger presence than it was back when the 360 and the PS3 launched. But you know, because these two companies are after consumer dollars, basically, you know, our money to um, 
to fundamentally, you know, buy their console or buy their product, that they're really, really pushing themselves. As ironically, as I've been talking about, you know, oh, isn't it great when Battlefield works? Let me just pick up this antimatter rifle. No, no, there we go. Um, yeah, isn't it funny how... Oh, and I've dropped it again. Wonderful. Yeah, isn't it funny how competition works uh, like that, I guess? Um, yeah, I I really like the fact that we've got two hardware competitors going at it hammer and tongs, as well as, you know, let's not forget the PC guys. I mean, the beauty of a PC is that it's upgradable in flight, and as a result, we can have all sorts of, you know, fancy and new pieces of, of equipment technology pushing ever further, and, you know, things like... CUDA, um, I mean, heck, actually, speaking of NVIDIA stuff, uh, I saw that there's now, um, I forget, is it the Titan Z, where it's two Titans strapped together on one board with a load of you know memory and all the rest. I find it amazing that, essentially, you know, the consoles, these you know new generation of consoles, they're basically PCs in a box. Nothing wrong with that at all, but it's, it's great to see how the PC is pushing itself, the consoles are pushing themselves, because, frankly, you know, we as consumers, there are more of us playing games, which is great. Um, and not only that, everyone's pushing each other to try and be the platform to play on. There are concerns in the PC camp, and, and Watch Dogs has shown this, where uh, obviously you've got games being optimised for one graphics card company over another, but yeah, um, that's another thing. But I'm really encouraged to see, basically, with new hardware, everyone is trying to, to get you know well and truly in the game with new games, ideas, technology, all the rest. To try and give us, you know, new and interesting experiences, which fundamentally, at the end of the day, will mean we buy their product over someone else's. Um, you know, a game like Watch Dogs, for example, just wouldn't happen on previous generation hardware. Um, it could have happened on PC, I'm sure, but without the, you know, knowledge of there being, say, a console which could do the job. I don't think a, you know, a publisher such as Ubisoft would be able to go and say, okay, we'll take the risk and just develop on PC for this. You know, I'm sure that they, when they saw you know, specs of new consoles, were, okay, let's go, give the go-ahead on this game, which you know, wasn't possible before. I guess it's you know, just part of the enthusiasm, the excitement, which comes with new hardware and you know, new, new challenges and all the rest, that you get these opportunities to do new and interesting things. And... As new consoles have come, as YouTube has kind of faded in the streaming sense to Twitch, because Twitch has just been absolutely on it, and, well, YouTube are now, and Google are now going to try and buy them, it's really interesting to see how competition is basically driving us ever forward. And um, it'll be interesting to see, I guess, how the next years and months play out, both with the games being released and, well, we've got E3 just around the corner, but also the landscape and, and of which that we consume gaming content like uh, like these commentaries and streams and all the rest. Anyway, 20 minutes to talk about a few different things, and I just about got there. I'm very rusty with this commentary. So, guys, as always, if you could leave any feedback, any suggestions on any of the stuff I've talked about, do feel free to do so. Um, you know, Things won't have changed. I've not become this this person. No, I'm going to ignore all feedback. Heck no. I'd love to know what you think and what you think about general things as, as things have gone on in the time I've been away. Anyway, again, as always, just thank you so very much for watching. Um, it really does mean a lot to me that you're still here after all these months, and I promise you guys I'll be back with a vengeance. So anyway, guys, I've been Chuggy, and I'll see you next time out on the battlefield.